Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced with another video on how to use DBT with Dremio. Now in this example, I'm actually going to use DBT with Dremio software. So in the previous video I did, I showed how to use it with Dremio Cloud. And the process is pretty much the same either way, um, but just to show you both. Okay, so again, if you want to try this at home, okay, and that's going to be one of the benefits of this particular exercise, is you can just do this straight from your laptop and try it out, is... Um, what you can do is you have to build out uh, your local Dremio environment, which you can do in a few minutes. You can just read this particular blog. I'll have the link to this blog in the video description so that way you can quickly spin up a Dremio environment local to your machine. Um, cool. So that would be sort of the first step. Once you have your local Dremio environment set up, so in this case, I created a, so in my, basically I created two different connections to my Nessie catalog that point to two different buckets for storage in my uh, Minio account. Um, not unnecessary. Uh, and then I created a space for my DBT practice. Okay. Cause in, in Dremio software, you, instead of having the Arctic catalogs, you have spaces. They essentially play the same fundamental role, but again, just a slightly different sort of experience. Okay. So essentially what you need is you're going to need to have some sort of source where you can create iceberg tables in, which could be, you could just directly connect to Minio using an object storage source. You could use a Nessie source like I have here. Either of those will be fine, and you'll need a space, or you could just use your home space, okay, uh, which is this space right here that just kind of comes out of the gate in Dremio software, okay? So then what you would do is, again, you would open up to a clean environment in your local IDE, okay? And you would create a Python virtual environment, okay? I won't run through the steps of creating a Python virtual environment. I did do that in the previous DBT for Dremio cloud video, if you want to see me go through those steps. Um, but essentially, once you have your Python virtual environment set up, then all you would do is you would install pip install dbt Dremio, just like that. And that would install everything pretty much you need. And then going forward, all you have to do is just create a new uh, dbt profile, which you can do by doing dbt init. Okay, uh, dbt init. In this case, we're going to call it software since we're doing it with Dremio software. Okay. And now I'm going to be creating a new uh, Dremio project. Okay. Uh, look what like this. Oh, it's because I'm already in. Um, just control C. I need to get up a folder. CD up. Just clear my terminal. Let's do that again. DBT init software. There we go. Okay. And it should, should walk me through the environment. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select that I'm connecting to Dremio. So boom. Then it's going to ask me for Dremio Cloud, Dremio Software with username and password, uh, or Dremio Software with a path. In this case, since I set this up locally, you set up a username and password when you first log into Dremio. So I'm going to use the username and password. Okay, so I want to just do that. So I'm going to choose number two. The host should be the IP address or domain where Dremio is running from. So in this case, it's running right here on my local laptop. So I'll just use my local IP address, 127.0.0.1. If you have it on running on your laptop, it should be the same IP address. Okay. If you decide to deploy it to the cloud, then, you know, or you create your own virtual instance, it would be whatever IP address that is. Okay. And then the port 947, just accept the default. Username, that would be your username. So that for me, that would be Alex Reset, then I'll put in my password. Okay, now in this case, since I'm running it locally, it's not behind an SSL certificate, so I would want to use the default of false. Okay, now object storage source could either be a Nessie source or an object storage source. So again, in Dremio, just to show you, I would put the name of the source. So in this case, I have two Nessie sources, lake house and warehouse, but it should it could be any object storage source, just basically any source where Dremio can write an iceberg table to. So actually probably a hive source would work too. Haven't tested that out. AWS Glue should probably also work as well. Um, but S3, Azure Data Lake Storage, any of these object storage sources should also work. It just needs to be somewhere that Dremio can write an iceberg table to. Okay, so I would put that there. So I'm gonna put, uh, I will put a uh, warehouse. Okay. Then you can put like a sub, if you want to put like a specific location in that source that you want to connect to. So in this case, what I'll do is that in my warehouse bucket, I'm going to create a second folder here called test two. Okay. And I'm going to use that to be where we'll materialize any tables that get created. So we'll put test two. Okay. So that basically just means warehouse.test two. Okay. So the first one, the previous thing was like the actual source. And here I'm talking, I'm 
creating the path within a specific location within that source. Then here I can choose a space. Okay, so Andremio Cloud was one of those Arctic catalogs. Here on Dremio Software, we're selecting one of these spaces. By default, it'll select your home space. So that's like the at username space. I have a DBD practice space, so I'm gonna use that. Okay, and I'll create a folder in there as well. The folder test two. Okay, and basically I'll say, okay, again, it's gonna, we're gonna use uh, the DBT practice space and I'm gonna to wanna to put everything in the test two folder. Okay, one thread is fine and we're good. We basically, that creates a profile in the DBT profile uh, YAML, which is gonna be located in a hidden folder within your root, uh, your home directory. So technically it would be like tilde slash dot DBT would be the folder where that file would be located if you wanted to edit it. Okay, but then what I would do is that now I can CD into the folder that was created. So you can see here we created a folder called software that has basically all the files we need to get started. Okay, and really important is this dbt project.yaml. This kind of describes everything. Okay, so in this case, really what's important here is he, this section right here tells it where to look for models. So it's saying, hey, look for it in the example folder and everything in the example folder should be materialized as a view. Okay, so it's materializing as a view. I could change at the table if I wanted to create actual like iceberg tables. Um, I can kind of set these settings. I can set a whole bunch of kind of settings in here. Okay, but essentially this is where you can find that uh, information. Okay, so in that case, it's looking right now. I'll kind of go with that setting. So it's going to look specifically in the models folder in this example folder for any models. Okay, and since you have three files. Okay, um, and essentially what happens here is you have these SQL files and these SQL files have SQL and the result of running that SQL will turn into a view by the name of whatever we put as the name of the file. So if I actually just run, like if I CD into this folder, so I'm gonna CD into models, not CD into models, CD into uh, software. And then I'm gonna actually run the dbt models. So I just hit dbt run. This will run these two models that we have here, okay? You can also have a schema.yaml file. And what this can do is it allows you to like run tasks. So here I can say, hey, I have these two models, a model by the two names of the two files. And what I can do is I can specify what column should be out there. So that way it can enforce these rules and make sure that, hey, these columns exist. These things are, these aspects are true about those columns. And then, you know, basically validate the result if you want. Okay. It's not necessary, but again, you know, validation definitely helps prevent mistakes. So as you can see, this was all, this all ran successfully. So you see completed successfully. So now if I go back to Dremio and I look in that test two folder, there's my two, uh, my two uh, views. Now, if I take a look at this first, my first DBT model here, you're gonna see that there's this config command. So you can use config commands above any particular dbt model to kind of change the way that particular model is going to behave like if you wanted to kind of create it in a different location um in this case what we're doing is we're changing that this particular one's going to materialize as a table as well okay so in this case this like source data result is going to uh, turn into a table so if i actually go to my object storage where that table would be created so i go to the warehouse i go here in the test two see there's the the the, the materialization of the table so i can go query that Okay, and see here's like a physical table. So this creates the table, leave. And then over here, we can see views based on that table. Okay, what we have here in test two. Okay, cool. Now I could, again, I could also change where these views get located. So nothing you can do here in config is I can do things like change like the database. Now if I change the database, technically what I am changing is um, I'm going to be changing essentially where this gets created. So in this case, this would be like a different space. So in this case, in the context of Dremio software, you would think of the database property as different spaces. Well, in Dremio cloud would be different Arctic catalogs. So in this case, if I were to create like DBT practice two, save. Okay. And let's try this out. So if I were to sit here and say, Hey, now do this in DBT practice two. Okay. Okay, yep. And then again, if I wanted to, I could also change like the schema, which means the subdirectory. So I could be like schema, uh, make the schema like test.test. .test. So uh, 
that would be like a folder called test and then inside there a folder called test. Okay, so let's try this out. And again, if there's anything wrong, it'll give us errors. So that's the beauty of it. We can get errors and then we can adjust. So I'll hit dbt run. Okay, I have a feeling we might run into an issue with this, the my second dbt model and I'll explain why if we run into it. Yep, okay, and we'll just click one error. So let's see what the error is in. One or more elements on the path are not found in namespace practice two dot test dot test. One or more elements. So let's see whether to get to one of two start creating two to SQL. It says namespace not found. One or more elements on the path. Yeah, so in this case, the issue is I need to create those folders first. So again, so that means it's going to want me to create the folder of test. and then create another folder of test. Okay, let me just confirm that when I look at the error, everything makes sense. Namespace dbt practice two dot test dot test my first model. Okay, so let's run that again. Okay, and again, that's part of the part of the beauty of this is again, you get error messages that can help you make sure that you, but once you got your models all set, it'll, and see that time it ran perfectly fine. But see this time it's going to run. Now, if I go here, the model's there. So again, I can actually change where these models get created because you want to craft the semantic layer and you're going to want to have certain views show up in different folders and different spaces and whatnot. So you have a lot of flexibility with that, with this config command to change how that behaves. And again, the, if you're not familiar with DBT, this reference function allows you to reference a view that was created from a previous model. So what it'll do is it'll orchestrate it based on these references and determine what order they should be run in. But essentially that's it. That's all it takes to run uh, DBT models against your soft, your Dremio software cluster. Um, it's just basically you configure your, you configure your, uh, your profile. And then after that, you're off to the races and you get the full power of DBT to curate your, your views, uh, in, in, in Dremio. So how awesome is that? Uh, my name is Alex Brissett, developer advocate here at Dremio. Um, again, there'll be some, uh, all sorts of resources coming to further support, uh, showing you how to use DBT to the best of your ability to, to its maximum potential with Dremio, whether it's Dremio Cloud or Dremio Software. So keep a lookout for those resources. Hopefully these videos help out. My name is Alex Prince, Developer Advocate from Dremio. See you all later.